Hello again, welcome back to Legally Cited. This is BGFH, and this time I'm back for another assistive technology demo. This, uh, I haven't done one of these in quite a while, um, but I want to show you guys a little program that I just discovered uh, within the last couple of days, and it is a free program for Windows, and it is called Glass Brick, just the way it sounds, G-L-A-S-S-B-R-I-C-K. And since it is a free program, you can download it at glassbrick.org. And <clears throat> they are also accepting donations to keep development going. So what is Glassbrick? It is a free screen magnifier program. Um, I've shown you the Windows 7 magnifier in the past, which uh, in Windows 8, it does work pretty much exactly the same way. The plus side to the Windows 8 version is that it run it will let you run it if you are using, let's say, JAWS or another screen reader that typically likes to disable those things like Windows Arrow. Um, but so that's a really nice change in Windows 8. But uh, Glassbrick is a it's another free screen magnifier that adds a little bit more customization than the Windows magnifier does. So. For people who especially want like color combination changes, a little bit more customization control over the visuals, um, glass brick may be a way to go. Now I am going to be running this with the full version of System Access, and now that I'm using Fraps, hopefully I won't have any weird audio hitches like I did in the earlier System Access videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Windows Explorer, Windows E. Computer, list, local disk, C, not selected. And that way, um, you can also hear exactly what I'm doing if you can't see the video screen so well. So, uh, open up Windows Explorer here. I'm going to jump down to my thumb drive. Because the nice thing about Glassbrick is that you don't install anything. You literally go to the website, you download a zip file that contains two files. Devices with removable which storage. I'll show you here. DVD or removable disk. I space used. Thirty six percent available space. List. Okay. Dot spotlight V one hundred. Not selected. Let's go to glass brick here. Fine. Glass brick dot two point zero. Okay, glass brick. We're at two point zero right now. List. Glass brick dot x. Not selected. Glass brick dot exe. Glass brick sixty four dot x. And sixty four. I haven't actually really played with the sixty four because I haven't really, um, haven't really got it to work just yet uh, on my work computer. I'll get into that shortly. But I'm just going to run the regular Glass version brick. right now. Um, we're going to run it. Glass brick. Glass brick is now in the system tray. Okay, so you get a little balloon down there in the corner. It says glass brick is now running in the system tray. So um, what you get now is it lo everything looks normal up to this point. But if I hold the control key down on my keyboard and I have a wheel mouse hooked up to my desktop here. So I'm going to hold the control key down, spin my mouse wheel in, zoom it in a little bit. Downloads. Favorites. And there we go. We have back magnification. Uh, let's go ahead and Windows M back to our desktop here. That way you can see a little bit more colors, Raise you know, the sun. a little bit more uh, text, as it were. My cool little Saints Row desktop that I'm still using here. Now, I'm the way I'm moving the the mouse right now, I'm purposely kind of moving it fairly slowly. And I don't know if it'll be I don't know if you'll really pick up on it on the video, but by default, it kind of one of the things I didn't really like is that there seems to be I think they do what they call smooth scrolling or panning and as I move around it almost has this delay, so even if I move my mouse really fast, zip, you know, it kind of takes a while to catch up. And, you know, even when I'm using Windows Magnifier, that's something that I don't really like as much. So, this glass brick program, it runs down in your system tray. All it is is a little bit of an icon. Glass brick button. I'm going to right click it. User menu opened. Okay, well actually, let me use my keyboard that way I won't cut system access off. Exit. Show settings. Show settings. Glass brick, glass brick, speed, medium, faster, amount, medium, more. Ma now we have a multi-page dialog box here where we control basically all the settings in the program. And that's all it is. You have settings and exit. 
there really doesn't seem to be any help documentation. Um, for the most part, the program is pretty straightforward, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to include a little bit more um, reference material or explanation of a couple of the features either on the website or on a quick little help page in the program, I would say. So um, we have our multiple pages here. Zoom, zoom tab, glass and we're on the Zoom right now. And I'm just going to tab through the features real quick and kind of let you hear what they are. Zoom speed, slower, slider, 50. So zoom speed, that's when I use my control mouse wheel. How fast do I want it to zoom in? I can control that a little bit. 75. I'm going to crank it up to 75. That's what I had it going at work, and it worked pretty well. Zoom amount, less, slider, 50. Zoom amount, that's uh, when you zoom in, like how, how much do you want it to zoom in at a time? You know, do you want it like little chunks or do you want to have, you know, do you want to just go boom? Uh, little to small with hardly any, hardly any turn of the scroll wheel at all, so. Key combo plus scroll wheel to zoom. Include control key. Checkbox. Checked. And here's where you customize. So let, let's say you had another program that used that combination, which uh, actually, well, zoom text does, except for you wouldn't be running this in zoom text at the same time anyway, so that doesn't really matter. But you can check or uncheck. Include Windows key. Checkbox. Not checked. These keys that you want to include. So I could say, do I want it to include just Include Control be key. Checkbox. Checked. The Control key, which is what we have now. Do I want to hold the Alt include Control Windows key, key down for whatever reason, or include Alt key. Checkbox. Not checked. No, we're not. We're going to leave that alone. Include Shift key. Checkbox. Not checked. Accelerate. Checkbox. Checked. Um, accelerate, I'm not exactly sure what that does. I think the longer you scroll in, the, you know, the longer you spin the wheel, the, the quicker it will start to zoom in or out is what I would presume that to do. Keyboard enabled, checkbox, checked. Keyboard enabled. This is handy, especially on a laptop, because, when, you know, on the original video and on the, the explanation that they had on the website, they said, oh yeah, just use your control and a mouse wheel. Well, that's cool, but if I'm using a laptop, um, I may not always want to have, or I may not always have, a wheel mouse with me. Yeah, I just have the keyboard and a trackpad. So you can do the keyboard commands, and I did do this at work. I haven't zoom set this key up combo. just Editable yet. Text. Enter key combo. So zoom in key combo. Let's do. Let's see. I'll set it up the way I did at work. So I'm going to say Control Right Bracket. Zoom out. I'll tab. Zoom out key combo. Editable text. Enter key combo. Uh, zoom out. I'm going to set to control left zoom bracket. Zoom on off. And I don't know why it says the label of the next uh, item control. It's I'm not actually on the control, but it, it says the next control for whatever reason. When navigating this settings dialog box, there is a little bit of quirkiness, at least with system access, what I've tried, where like it just says things a little bit funny, so you're not quite sure what some of the stuff is. But uh, let's tab again. Zoom on off key combo. Editable text. Enter key combo. Zoom on off key combo. That I really want. I'm going to change that to, and I'm going to set that to win uh, or control apostrophe. Other zoom settings. Auto that, zoom out. Check box. That way they are all in the same area of the keyboard. Uh, I'm leaving my equals, uh, my plus and minus keys up on my backspace. I'm leaving those alone because I'm typically thinking that's going to conflict with like if you're in Windows Explorer or Internet Explorer, some things in Windows, if you use those control keys, you're able to zoom in and out. So I have a feeling that there may be some interesting conflicts there. So we are Auto on zoom out in seconds. Edit combo box. Auto zoom out. Check box. Not checked. Auto zoom out. I guess if you just wanted to use this program for, let's say you could see things most of the time, but if you wanted to just, oh, I need to really quick see what this word or this link is, you could kind of have it. Zoom in when you want, and then it'll automatically zoom out after. Auto zoom out in seconds. Edit combo box 10. So many seconds. Advanced mode. Check box. Not checked. Advanced mode. Here is why I wish that there was a little bit more help or documentation, because I have no clue what advanced mode does. Um, you know, I turned it on a little bit at work, and I really didn't notice any difference. So unless there's something really that I'm missing, not entirely sure what that means. OK button. Cancel button. Restore defaults button. I have a nice restore defaults button, which is handy in case I really screw something up. But let's go back up to the top here. Zoom speed. Zoom. Track tab. Speed. Fast. Faster. OK, tracking. Now this is where I want to change. Because remember when I said that 
if I move my mouse fast, the mouse kind of tends to lag a little bit. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's tap. Track speed slower. Slider seventy-five. Oh. Uh. One hundred. Let's crank that up to a hundred. I thought. Track tab speed instant faster mode cycle. Track let's speed see. slower slider one hundred. I thought I had it at seventy-five and it worked okay. Maybe I did crank it up all the way to a hundred. Track speed same as zoom speed checkbox not checked. So I could match that with the zoom speed. I don't want to do that. Track mode. Keep cursor at center of screen. Radio button selected. Keep cursor at center of the screen. That's pretty self-explanatory. Although I think it's really mostly relating to the cursor, is not so much the mouse. So if I'm typing in a notepad document or a Word document, an email, whatever, you're going to try to keep your cursor in the center of the screen and it'll follow along with you. Include centered mode and change list. Check box. Keep cursor at center of screen. Radio button selected. Okay, so I can arrow down. Let me show you what these rest of these options are. Unselected. Consistent with cursor position. Radio button selected. Okay, consistent with what was Unselect that? Unselected. Consistent with cursor position. Radio button Cur selected. Consistent with cursor position. I don't think you would typically want to do that because then your screen is going to be bouncing all over the place even more, I think. Unselected. When cursor reaches border, radio button selected. When reaches border, so basically your screen will be stationary until you're about to zoom off the screen as you're typing and then it'll just droop, zip you back, which I think to me would be a little bit jarring, so we're not going to do that. Unselected. When zoom key combo is held, radio button selected. When zoom key combo is held, mm, no, we're not going to do that either. Unselected. Keep cursor at center of screen. Radio button yeah, selected. Yeah, so let's keep it at that. That seems the most logical to me anyway. Include centered mode and change list. Checkbox. Checked. Um... Include consistent... Include centered mode and change list. Checkbox. Checked. I don't exactly know what that means. Um, so we're just going to leave that. Include consistent mode and cycle list. Checkbox. Not checked. Include border mode and cycle list. Checkbox. Checked. So these are kind of different... Um, if I think if I were to uncheck that item up, let's see, one of the one of these items, then I can control because these almost look like they're grayed out. Um, Include key combo mode and cycle list. Checkbox not checked. Huh. Change track mode key combo. Editable text. Enter key combo. Other track settings. Track typing. Checkbox checked. Okay, so track typing. That's pretty self-explanatory. I type. It follows along. Track focus. Checkbox checked. Track focus, that's, again, pretty self-explanatory. If you open a start menu or a dialog box comes up, it will kind of follow the focus to that type of thing. Track screen, checkbox, checked. Track screen, um, yeah, pretty much. If something changes, uh, it'll try to focus on whatever is relevant. Push edge, checkbox, not checked. Push edge. These three I'm not... Clamp edge, checkbox, checked. Entirely sure. I played with these a little bit too, and I think it has to do something with like when I move the mouse, like how does the screen behave? But honestly, I didn't notice a whole lot of difference, so I'm not entirely too sure. Again, a little more clarification. Like I said, I think I know what I, I know what some of these are, and I think I know what some of these options are, but. There are a few that, um, yeah, I'm not really as sure about a couple of these options, but just going through these with you here. Frame edge, checkbox, not checked. OK button, cancel, restore defaults, track speed, track tab. OK, so that's our tracking tab or our track tab. Color tab, glass brick, transition. Color. Now here is where I think a lot of people may like to use this as a free option over the Windows magnifier. Because in Windows Magnifier, you can zoom in and out, you can invert the colors, and that's it. Here we have... Color transition, slower, slider, 75. Color transition, slower. So if I... One thing I didn't show you when I was zooming in and out, if I hit the tilde key, which is just above the tab key on our keyboard here, I switch between color and invert right now. That's all it's going to do. But as we get into this dialog further, this page further, we're going to add some other options. Lock color transition to zoom speed. Checkbox. Checked. Okay. Um, I guess that was checked by default. Um, sure. I guess we'll leave it for now. Track mode. Default. Radio button. Selected. Now track mode is default. And that would be your color. Unselected. Invert. Radio button. Selected. So there we have our invert color. That's what you would get with Windows 7 or Windows 8 magnifier. 
Unselected. Saturate. Radio button. Selected. Saturate. Um, that basically just makes certain colors, I think, stand out a little bit more. Um, I, Zoom Text has a similar feature. I think Magic does as well. Not many people that I know really use that particular color mode. Unselected. Tint. Radio button. Selected. Tint? This is actually kind of nice. Um, the color that they chose for tint, this kind of light blue, I kind of like it, actually. Uh, especially if I'm working in, oh, if I'm working in like a Word document or something, it's just really more pleasant on the eyes. You know, you're you're if you're looking at this just this solid white space, uh, staring at that all the time. <clears throat> yeah, that can be a little bit annoying, uh, a little bit too hard on the eyes at times. You know, so especially for people who have a lot of you know who have trouble with glare and light sensitivity, this type of thing will really help. Now, I'm going to back up here just a second because what I originally couldn't figure out is I'm like, okay, this is a nice, to uh, nice color, a nice tint, nice little blue here. But I couldn't figure out, well, what if I didn't want that color? What if I wanted a different color? Can I do that? And the answer is yes. It's just not I didn't pick up on it right away because I figured there would just be like a color switcher or like a color combo box or something where I could choose, you know, yellow, blue, green, whatever. Um, but it doesn't quite work that way and I'll show you what happens. First I'll show you what I was really confused by and it kind of amuses me. Amount, slider, 50. So we can do the amount, I can kind of, it's like the, I think that's kind of like the saturation. Amount, edit combo box, 0.5. Tint random, checkbox, not checked. Now, tint random, this is really kind of funny. If I check this, watch what happens. Checked. Nice little psychedelic slideshow. So, you know, if you want to, you know, if you're feeling pretty good and, you know, you want to just uh, have things randomly change color on you, I don't know why you would ever do that. Or if there's another way that I'm supposed to be using this checkbox, I'm not sure, but I just find it kind of funny that it's doing this weird kind of site, kind of all these soft colors, but this weird psychedelic Unchecked. sort of random color thing they got going on. So I, I'm like, why would you want that? And how do I just select one of those colors? The answer is what you do is you amount, go back. Amount, tint, radio button, selected. I'm on tint right now with the radio button. Color transition, lock color transition, slower, slider, 75. If I shift tab. Color tab, transition, fast, faster, mode. Color transition, slower, slider, 75. Let's see, I believe it's. Uh, 100, 75, 50, 25, 50, 75. Lock color transition, no, track mode, amount, no, slider, 50. Uh, oh, amount, here we go. 41. I went too far back, I apologize. So we want. 50. Okay, we were here. Tint, amount, slider, 50. Amount, this is what we want to change. So I'm just going to use my left and right arrow keys and slide it a little bit, show you the different colors that we get. 41, 33, 25, 16, 8, 0. So they kind of get a little brighter, and then we're at 0. Let's go back up to 50. 8, 6, 20, 33, 41, 50. 50, um, and I actually really kind of like that, 50. 58. 58, nah. 66. No. 75. 83, nah. 91, 100. Nah, I'm kind of liking 50, so Not we're going to... 75, 60, 58, 50. We're going to keep it right at 50. 58, yeah. 50, 41, 50. Yeah, 50 seems like the right way to go. Now, kind of what I almost wish that I could do here is with this particular shade, I kind of wish that there was like an invert um, on this particular option. Tint, radio button. Select. For tint, because... I'm kind of curious slider. what that would look like with, you know, your your dark background and that that kind of bluish color as text. So let's Amount. tab Edit combo box. some more. 0.5. Tint random. Checkbox. Not checked. There's our funny little random button again. Include default mode in cycle list. Checkbox. Checked. Okay, so include def uh, default. That's your color. Include invert mode in cycle list. Checkbox. Checked. Co uh, invert color. That's what we did when I hit the tilde key. Include saturate mode in cycle list. Checkbox. Not checked. Saturate. I'm going to leave that off because I don't really like saturate. Include tint mode in cycle list. Checkbox. Not checked. I'm going to include that because I like this mode. Checked. Include contrast mode in cycle list. Checkbox. Include not checked. Include contrast mode. Checked. 
I'm gonna check that. Change color mode key combo, editable text, enter key combo. And there's my, where I can customize my key. I'm gonna leave it at the tilde key because that's nice and convenient and nobody really uses the tilde key for anything except for the consoles and first person shooters, but there you go. Okay button. Now, before I leave this color tab, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back around. Cancel button, restore default, color transition, color transition, lock color transition, track mode, tint, radio button. So I'm on tint right now, so I just tabbed around until I got to these radio buttons. I'm gonna go down to. Unselected, contrast, contrast. radio button, selected. This is sort of where I think, um, was it? I think Magic called it like two color mode and zoom text, you could, it had a similar label. I forget exactly how they're labeled. But this is where you can kind of say, okay, I want this color and this color. And that's, you know, you can customize the, the foreground and background color. And this section you can invert as well. So we're going to tab again. Amount, slider, 50. Amount, again, we're at 50, so we're going to go back down to zero. 25. So I can choose that as a background. This kind of... Zero. Okay, not 25. a whole lot of difference there. 50. Got our yellow. 75. 100. 100. 75. 100. Set 50. I'm going to go back down to 50, but I'm going to tab again. Amount. Edit combo box. 1.0. Invert. Check box. Not checked. Now I'm going to invert this. Checked. And you notice our wallpaper looks like complete garbage, but our dialog box is kind of nice. Uh, not a bad little... Uh, I know some people like a lot of white on black, or I've seen people like a, a yellow on black or a light green on black kind of thing. So if I go back amount, over to my amount, slider, 50. slider, 25, zero. That's not too bad. So I can see people liking the zero percent there. Um, that looks that looks pretty decent. 25, 25, zero, 25. Wow, those uh, sliders sort of disappear. Zero. <laughs> In the... 25, oh, okay. 50. 50. 75. And there's your yellow on blue. Uh, it looks okay, except for some of the letters. Like, you notice on the left, those stand out really nicely. But in the middle of the screen, right above our slider, those are kind of dim. So I would really have to play with this. I know some people do like the white on blue, or the like the white or yellow on blue. And I don't mind that myself, but uh, I think depending on, I would have to play with this scheme a little bit more to see on average what what text tend to look dark, like the, one, the, the, the text on the left, which I could see people will be able to see that a lot easier, I think. And then the stuff in the middle is a little dim, and I know for a fact that some people would have trouble seeing that. Um, 100. 75, Let's 50. Let's crank her down to this again, because that's a, yeah, even I would say it's not so bad because we have a hard black to work against there, but, you know, you can, again, you can tell that left side, the that left column of text there is nice and bright, whereas the stuff in the middle is a little dim. Not as bad as when we had the blue background, but a little dim. So let's tab again. Amount. I'm going to leave it like this. Invert. Checkbox. Checked. Include default mode in cycle list. Checkbox. Checked. Include invert mode in cycle list. Checkbox. Checked. Include saturate mode in cycle list. Checkbox. Include tint so we're include going this change again. color. Okay, button. Cancel. Restore. Color transition. Miss tab. Glass brick. About. Glass brick screen and magnifier. Person. There's your about tab kind of. So we're just going to okay, tab button. to okay. Start button. And now we have this ooh, awful background because <laughs> we had a black or a dark background before. But again, if I hit the tilde key, there's my full color. There is my invert. Uh, I believe this the is my, Yep, there's my tint because I got my night. Everything has a little, little tint there. Actually, that looks kind of neat. And there is my yellow on black that I have customized for my contrast mode. And again, just like any of these screen magnifiers, I am really, really, really waiting for. Um, I'm waiting for a screen magnifier to have a true mode where you leave my pictures alone and you just change the sheer background, the background, the flat background and text. If, it, if the program or Windows recognizes it as a graphic, leave it alone. I really would love to see that feature. 
So let Task me go bar. to a web page really quick. HTTP, johnson.com, Internet Explorer. So I got Giant Bomb coming up here. Quick look, tornadoes and personal quick. Okay, uh, what do we got quick look, here? Mind path to Thalamus, read only text, blank. All right, so, we, you know, we've got our store. full Thank colors you. here, but let me do a little switching with our tilde. We so again, everything is going to look all funky. Tornadoes could, and personal If I could just invert the black background. Tornadoes and personal And the text. And not screw quick look. Even, you know, that actually is less offensive. This tint, I think, is less jarring. Meet the people behind Hyrule Warriors. Link. On the f different features. Video, unfinished. Or on the different uh, pictures. Um, and, uh, you know, at least it's not complete, like a photo negative or whatever. Quick look. So. Quick look. My that is kind of a look at. And again, I can just control in my wheel, zoom in and out. Oh, let me go back to the desktop here really quick. I want to show desktop. you. Remember how we changed that uh, track setting? Now if I move my mouse fast, there's a little bit of catch-up time. Glass break down too. But it's definitely less jarring, especially, I mean, you're typically not going to move it just, you know, really fast. Um, you're going to move it, you know, maybe like this. And that doesn't feel too bad. So you may want to change. You may want to crank that uh, track speed up to about seventy-five to one hundred percent for it to feel pretty fluid. At least uh, that's my preference. So, um, yeah, I think for a free screen magnifier, it's pretty darn decent. Uh, it does give you a little bit more color control over. Windows Magnifier, like I said, Windows Magnifier, you can invert the color and go to full color, ah, and that's it. Whereas this, you know, with the with the tint and with the contrast modes, those two modes, you can customize each one of those, and that's typically what people want to do. You know, because if you're, you know, invert is nice sometimes, like if I go to a Word document, those are going to be white backgrounds typically. But just like if I go back to the internet, Glass break dot two points F R A P S desktop. Giant bomb video. Giant let's go bomb back video. To giant bomb here. I have the, the giant bomb that I'm looking at is a black background. So if I had this inverted, and I like reading with a black background, um, my inversion is going to overwrite this black background and it's going to appear white, and I don't want that. <clears throat> Whereas if I do my contrast and I choose to be inverted, then I'm always going to see that nice black background and whatever tint, whatever color, like the yellow or the blue or whatever, um, you're going to have that. So that, I think, is really what people want over Windows Magnifier. And then the other thing that I would say, both with Windows Magnifier and Glass Brick, is that Neither one of them, like the more I zoom in, let me zoom in a little bit. Again, now you may be able to tell that some of the text, it, it can kind of tend to blur up a little bit. Um, typically you probably don't want to zoom it in quite that far to read, but you know, if you do need to, there you go. But when you zoom in, your letters are going to start looking a little blurry, a little bit jagged or pixelated, whereas something like Zoom Text or Magic will do a little bit more of that font smoothing for you, especially Zoom Text. They do a really, a generally a pretty good job. So you're not going to get that, but if you want a free option with a little bit more control than you would typically get with Windows Magnifier, um, yeah, glass brick seems to be a pretty good option. Um, like I said, it's available. Go to uh, glassbrick.org, I believe. And you can just download it right from their website. Like I said, it's just a zip file. You unzip it, and within the folder, you just run your uh, executable. You dump it on a thumb, put it on a folder in your thumb drive, and you have this uh, magnification wherever you go. What I'd like to see improved, um, I would like a little bit more maybe documentation on the website or in the program itself, just on some of the features 
or how to change uh, what some of the features mean. Like I have no idea what that advanced mode is. Desktop. Um, there were a couple of other like checkboxes that I wasn't completely sure. I thought I knew what they did, but I'm not. You know, I wasn't completely certain. Um, you know, it'd be nice to have a little bit more explanation there. Um, one thing. Now I haven't Start noticed. Button. Oh crap! I did. Ooh, okay. Hopefully, I didn't screw that up. I'm so used to running Windows Magnifier. When I wanted to zoom in, I started using the Windows Magnifier. So let's hope that that didn't. I'm going to zoom in with uh, Glassbrick here. If I okay. When I was using this on one of my work laptops, what I found was as I was zooming around, my mouse seemed to like to get stuck. Like especially if I was looking at something on the bottom half or bottom third of the page where the mouse would kind of like to get stuck down here and I couldn't find the dang thing and I really had to kind of fuss with it a little bit to kind of get it back up in the middle of the screen so I could kind of actually click on things and move around a little bit better so I was having a little bit of trouble with that on my work machine now when I've been zooming around here it seems Windows Explorer list global disk C not selected. So let's change our colors here again. There's my blue tint. That's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so if I zoom around, yeah, it seems to be behaving a lot better on this machine. So I don't know. May, maybe your mileage may vary on that a little bit, but it's something that I encountered on another machine. So I definitely just wanted to let you know. Um, that that could potentially be an issue. So let's switch it back to full color. Close Start Windows button. Explorer. And yeah, that is glass brick in a nutshell. Um, like I said, I just uh, learned about it. Coworker of mine told me about it, uh, emailed me something about it the other day. And I just got a chance to finally look at it earlier today as I'm recording this. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for something for free that's a little bit more feature rich than the Windows Magnifier, this is uh, not a bad little option. So now we have things like SA to Go and NVDA and Window Eyes for Office, all screen readers that you can download for free. We have Windows Magnifier, we have Glassbrick for free screen magnification. So yeah, I mean, unless you need something, you know, if you're just a big, you know, if you're just doing like home, basic home user stuff, it's not too bad. Um, you have a lot of good options. You know, as you've heard me talk about on the channel before, uh, I really like system access. It's a, it seems to be really good, especially if you do a lot on the internet. I think System Access does really well. NVDA has done very well uh, in catching up and offering a lot more functionality and a lot more features, especially over the last year or two. Um, <clears throat> Windows Magnifier, no complaints there. I really like it. And this seems pretty solid too. Oh, the one thing I was going to mention as kind of a caution, uh, I'm ha I have a really old version of Office on this computer right now. But at work, I did try this with Office 2013 or 2013, and the tracking didn't work yet in Word 2013 or in, like, if I was in an Excel and I tried to arrow, uh, it didn't seem to follow along. Like, if I go Start to menu, Notepad. 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 Untitled Notepad. Hello. 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 This is, is just a, a test. Tab. Let me zoom in a little bit more to illustrate this. Editable text. Blank. The, the cursor, cursor will, will follow along, along as, as I, I type. type. So that's what it's supposed to do. If I'm in uh, Office 2000, 2013 right now, that doesn't seem to work just yet. So if you are trying to type in there that definitely could be an issue and you're probably better off with Windows Magnifier at this time 
because it seems to track okay. So I just wanted to be let you guys know about that. And, you know, so you, you will have to kind of, if you do really want to follow along visually, you're going to have to kind of give the mouse a little bit of a bump from time to time, which, yes, can be definitely very obnoxious, which is why originally I didn't like Windows Magnifier uh, until I discovered how to fix that problem. Um, yeah, I definitely understand that can be very annoying. So hopefully they iron that out in a, in a future update soon. So that pretty no much, pass. that wraps up Giant uh, glass brick. But before I wrap up this video, I do want to show you one other very quick thing that will also help no matter if you're using Windows Magnifier or Glassbrick or any magnifier for that matter, or even if you're not using magnifier. Um, I think I covered this in the Windows Magnifier video. Um, if I didn't, uh, I don't remember. But one, the other complaint besides, you know, obviously magnification and color, the other main complaint people have is the default mouse is really hard to see and can be really hard to find or track on the screen. So let me zoom in a little bit more again. And in Windows 7 or Windows 8, this is what you do. Um, Windows has a lot of mouse customization options built in already. So I'm going to go to my Start menu with the Windows key. Start menu, search programs and files. I'm just going to type in mouse. Microsoft mouse and keyboard center. Now you're going to get different options depending on what computer you have, but essentially you want to arrow down until you hear control panel group. You hear control panel group typically mouse, and then you hear just plain old mouse. That's what we want. Taskbar, mouse properties, mouse and keyboard center tab. Okay, I'm going to hit enter on that. We get a little dialog box pop up, and I am going to uh, jump to a different tab. So I'm going to use control tab because I'm doing this via keyboard. Otherwise, I could click up here on these little what? tabs, but I'm going to use the keyboard. Pointers tab, Steam, Steam. And what you want to go to is you want to go to the pointers tab. And Normal select. we have a Normal. kind of a combo Delete box button. or a drop down Steam. box drop down list. Windows. right here for the scheme. And again, you can use the mouse to click and open it up to choose one, or you can just use the uh, keyboard like I'm doing here. Delete button. And down Working. here, select. Uh, down below, you see pretty much all of what this mouse scheme is going to look like. So I have it on Windows Black Extra Large right now, which is typically what I choose. I find it, for me, by far the easiest to see. So, you know, I've got my big black cursor uh, or pointer on the top. There's my little working with the little hourglass and all that kind of stuff. That is what you're going to look like. So if I Save tab... Save button. Steam. Drop down list. Windows Black. Extra Large. System Steam. Windows Black, large, system steam. So you notice the 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 items down there got a little smaller. Windows Black, system steam. Windows inverted, extra large, system steam. Windows inverted. Some people might like that, but like I said, I kind of usually like to look for a certain color because again, if I'm on a black background, those things are going to look white, and you just you know you never know quite what color it's going to be. Windows inverted, Windows inverted, Windows standard, extra large, system steam. So there's the Windows standard. Win Windows, Windows Standard, Large, System Steam. Windows Standard, so there's, you know... Win, 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 Windows Black, System Steam. Win, Windows Black, Extra Large, System Windows Steam. Windows Black, Extra Large. Um, that's what I'm going to keep. I'm just going to hit Escape because I'm not going to change anything. This is the color scheme that I prefer. But you can go into this combo box and just arrow up and down and find the scheme. Look at these uh, different options there and see which ones you like. Giant bomb. So even if I have a black background, you know, you're thinking, well... A black background and a black mouse. Despite that, it still has that little kind of highlight around the outside of the mouse pointer. So it's even on black backgrounds, it still stands out to me pretty well. So let me zoom in a little bit again. Car, car. So yeah, black on black, you still have that border. Still looks pretty good. So um, yeah, I just want to give you guys uh, those two things in combination if you're using either Windows Magnifier or this glass brick. Um, and then you change your mouse scheme. And you can also change, there's another option I forgot to show you, um, that just in the mouse settings you can add, there's a checkbox for pointer trails. 
So as I move the mouse around, you can see a little like, you know, like if, you know, cartoons or whatever, when you see something going really fast, you see the little shadows behind, you'll see like little mouse trails. So that'll help you pinpoint it a little bit easier if you're still having trouble finding that mouse. But uh, yeah, between, you know, between Windows Magnifier and Glassbrick and then this mouse options, you have some pretty solid magnifier choices for no charge right now. So, you know, just like NVDA and, Gla and Glassbrick too, you know, if you like this stuff, it is free, but if it's something that you find yourself using all the time, I would highly encourage you guys to support the, you know, support the developers, you know, chip in a few bucks here and there. You know, they, they do ask for, or they do, you know, accept donations on their websites. And uh, I've donated to NVDA a couple of different times. I, bought, I chipped in like 30, 50 bucks, maybe, you know, once a year or so. Because uh, I think they're, you know, what they're doing is really good. And, um, you know, if it means that I can have a free or a cheaper screen reader and not have to pay 800, 1200 bucks with periodic, you know, a couple hundred dollar updates every couple of years, uh, yeah, sounds good to me. So... You know, definitely, like I said, support these guys, you know, support these kind of developers if you do end up using this kind of technology. So to wrap it up, I'm going to go down button. to the system tray again. Glass brick button. Use menu open. Right click. Show settings. Exit. Exit. Taskbar. Boom. 